<laughs> so we use this D block, which is called a D block because it's shaped like a D, to investigate something different. We use it to investigate something called total internal ref reflection. Which is often just called TIR for short. Okay, well, why is it D shaped? Well, it's D shaped because we can actually make sure that there's no refraction happening at the first boundary from air to the glass. And we're interested in what happens actually inside the glass. So, drawn around it in the same way as I did my rectangular block, but I need to know one more thing. I need to know what the midpoint is. And that's 9.8 centimetres. So the midpoint is going to be 4.9 centimetres. And what that allows me to do is actually aim my ray of light at that centre point there. And it means that it's always coming in, the ray of light, at 90 degrees to the surface. If it wasn't aiming at the midpoint though, it wouldn't be 90 degrees and you would have some refraction going on here. Hopefully you can see this okay. So I'm trying to keep aiming at that midpoint that I've marked out, and I'm just moving my ray box around, and therefore changing the angle it hits that back surface. Now there is a point at which the refracted ray, this is the refracted ray that's leaving the D block here, yeah? The ref we're looking for the point at which the refracted ray is refracting along the boundary. Ah, just about, can you see that? I've skipped in the rainbow, the dispersed light, just to judge and try and judge it in the kind of middle of the dispersed light, because that's obviously going to be the average for white light. Okay, there. And in the same way, I'm just going to mark where it come into the block and where that ray is from, so I can actually construct it afterwards. And I know that it's refracting along the boundary of the D block. So now I can turn my light off, and I'm done with my block there, and I can actually construct my rays from the information that I've recorded. So here's where it's from, where it's to, Maybe I wasn't hugely as accurate as I thought I was with that one there, but hopefully you can see a little more what I'm talking about here. If that was a tangent across there, then I'd have a 90 degree angle there. So, you know, it's, it's coming in along the normal, so there's no refraction happening here. And we know that the refracted ray went basically along the boundary there. Again, we're interested now in this angle here. We use, we always measure rays between themselves and a normal and I'm going to use the mark to it. I know I'm actually a couple of millimetres out there but I'm going to use the marking where my pen mark was. Okay so my normal is like so. I'm just going to go through the thing because that's normal for a normal. I don't have to go through it though if I don't want to. And this angle here is what I'm interested in. That angle there is the critical angle. Okay, so that's the one I'm going to measure. It's the critical angle, because it's the angle at which the refracted ray was refracting along the boundary here. Okay, and that angle is 40, somewhere between 41 and 42. I think it's just about closer to 42. So I'll give it 42. A little bit cheating, because I know the book value for critical angle with perspex is 42. One thing you should also know is that the uh, refractive index from 1 to 2 is 1 over sine of the critical angle. And if you remember from the last time, well, the critical, the refractive index is 1.33. So let's see if that works out. closer to 1.49 maybe I got the previous one wrong maybe 1.5 is the refractive index of perspex anyway we need to look all that stuff up um, 
Now, what happens if we go greater than? What happens if angle is greater than the critical angle? Well, let's have a little look at that. Carefully line up with my previous markers. Well, the angle's greater than, the angle's less than, you're getting a refraction out the back. Angle's greater than that, well, actually, you're getting it all reflected. And it's like the back is now acting as a mirror and it's obeying the law of reflection. Have you remember the law of reflection from your key stage three? It's just that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Okay, that was very interesting. It's very useful to us as well because we can actually send signals through glass things um, using this, this idea. This is, well, it's not an optical fiber, but fiber, but it's a model of an opt optical fiber. And you can see if I shine the light in at this end, well, that same light comes out here. So what is actually happening within our um, block? here. Well, again, we can mark it all out. So I just draw around my S-shaped perspex block. Put a little marker for where it comes in, where it goes, and one for where it comes out. It's not coming out as a ray, but you can imagine if you're just trying to send a digital signal, it's either on or off. And that can just happen quite regularly, well, very, very rapidly indeed. In comes the ray, it hits the boundary there. If I construct myself an imaginary tangent just there, I would then have a normal, you do this with the protractor really, but just there. And so the angle of incidence would equal the angle of reflection, I. And R, somewhere around there. Again, because it's greater than the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, we're getting total internal reflection. So yeah, the ray reflected along the hour fiber optic cable and whether it's just on or off at this end, will just be the same signal that we start here. It's very useful because you can see we've got quite a lot of play, we're quite a long way above 42 degrees there. So we can actually even bend these into different shapes and they don't have to be exactly on this different on this shape for it to just be reflected along. And very little of that signal will leave, be very little energy loss, very little of that signal will actually escape from the fiber optic, if you like. Thanks for watching this video from Gorilla Physics. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, why not go ahead and subscribe. I hope you found it useful, so please tell your friends, and every like and share that we get helps us be more useful to more people.